Today I'm going to show you a method that uh, I use to uh, clean copper and brass pennies. <clears throat> um, I kind of learned this back in science uh, when I was in high school. I don't remember the name of the teacher, but uh, me and my friends were talking and we were like, uh, I was telling the, the problem of, uh, you know, the coins that I, I pretty much leave my older coins kind of dark like this and I just give them a light scrub with a the green scrubby pad right there and and then I display them like this and uh, my friend was like hey don't you remember Mr. So-and-so um, got two pennies and he put them in a beaker and he came um, uh, look, looked like they were uncirculated when uh, he was done with them and then uh, I went back and I was like yeah I do remember that. So I looked up uh, different methods and I found the method that he was using. And uh, what he was using was uh, so hydrochloride acid, which is HC1. And you think to yourself, oh man, I ain't working with no chemicals like that. It's not really that bad. Sounds bad, just sounds nasty. And pretty much I've got my chemical sitting right here. This is hydrochloric acid. It's basically what you have most likely in your house already. Salt and vinegar. <clears throat> you put the vinegar in first and then you add the salt. I've got about one inch of salt and about two inches of vinegar. The more salt you have, the stronger it's going to be. Now I would recommend wearing, you know, typical gear, goggles, gloves, and uh, ventilation because it is hydrochloric acid. It does have fumes not including the smell of the vinegar, which is absolutely uh, disgusting. Uh, but uh, that's what I work with. And it's simply uh, amazing how it works. And I've already cleaned up two Indians. I've cleaned up this one. Of course, I don't have a before and after. But this is actually my third video. The two videos that I made were at night, and it was real dark out, real bad. And speaking of that, I'm probably going to turn the light on right now. Let me do that. Not sure if it made any difference, but uh, last night it was so dark and the lighting in here is pretty poor. So a nicer looking Indian, when you clean it up, it's going to kind of look like this. It's going to turn gold and brilliant looking. And this is, uh, I, I could actually uh, clean this up a little bit more. It's just, um, it, it was quick last night and it was dark in here. And this is one with a lot of boogers on it, like uh, a lot of crustiness. Like it's, the soil was real bad and it was uh, really uh, starting to decompose the penny. So uh, that's what it looks like before you get the Andre pencils in there and whatnot and try to make them as nice as this one right here. They look kind of like gold now. So you can use the, the wire brush to try to get the buggers off, you know, and it only works so much because this is a soft brass brush. This kind of buffs it a little bit. You gotta make sure it's wet. A new one with some soap in it. Let me put a little bit more soap in this one. I use Dawn soap. It makes it nice, nice and smooth. Use cold water. Um, you don't want to use anything uh, that's real hot because heat and then you know you're scrubbing. Uh, you end up scratching. So you want to keep it cool. And I only have this sponge here to dampen the noise of uh, it dripping and I want constant water dripping because I'm not going to use gloves and there's enough ventilation here I'm next to a window and uh, I don't need goggles because I'm going to be extremely careful so when you make your solution you're going to want it to shake it for about five minutes really get that salt agitated in here and then after you're done let it settle for about an hour then it's going to be transparent. You're going to, it's going to be clear. All the salt's going to drip down to the bottom. So here's a uh, a very worn Indian. I don't find many like this. That worn, like it's slick. I found this one a while back ago. Normally I find them at least with some detail on them. So I'm going to uh, get this one here. Get a little soap on this green spongy and get the first layer of tarnish off of it. That's important because you don't want to sit there and play with the solution forever. 
So I work both sides, get the first layer of grime off of it, and the dirt's already off of it. So if you have dirt on your penny still, do the toothbrush. Just go in there and work it. But this one don't have any dirt on it. I cleaned that off a while ago. It's just, this is tarnish. This is the darkness for being in the ground and then the metal starting to oxidize and everything like that. So, give a little work and it's already going to clean up when you use a scrubby. So next step is put it in the hydrochloride. Now, you don't let it drop to the bottom. You're going to use a pair of uh, tweezers that are made out of plastic. Um, because some people's hands are sensitive, mine aren't. And you're going to see it starting to immediately clean up as soon as you dip it in there. Uh, really, uh, this salt and uh, vinegar really uh, reacts to copper. Look at that. See how clean it is now? Look at that. See, see, that's where my finger was. See where my finger was holding it? Look how clean it got that. That's where my finger was like that. I'm going to clean the other side where my finger was. Try to get it nice. Now this is an ugly Indian, let me tell you. So we're not going to get this thing looking nice like that 1905 I just showed you. Look at that. All that dark is gone. Let's say you got some dirt there in the grooves. You can get the brush. Work it a little bit. Still see where my finger was holding it there. See the difference? Everyone wants it looking like that. That's an Indian that's really whooped, real beaten. Whoops. That almost went down the drain. Let me put that there. Should have done it in the first place. Alright, let me uh, clean this up a little bit more. I can see the year on it. Almost. I couldn't see the year before. I had no clue what this thing was. Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to get the loop. See, the sucker's got a lot of scratches on it, too. That's not from the Brillo pad. It's just... It's old. It's been in the ground for a while. This is part two of the video. I'm not sure what's wrong with this GoPro. Um, I had, a fresh, I had a fresh battery in it, and uh, 11 minutes and 40 seconds in, bam, it shut right off. So I was about to post this video, and the whole video wasn't finished. Um, so I ended up pulling out another Indian right there, and uh, we're going to clean up one with more detail on it than the uh, one that was slick. Here's the one that's slick. And uh, here's one that I'm going to try to make this one look like. My hands are slippery. And um, here's one that's a little dirty. I, I, I did a light cleaning on it. I wasn't able to get rid of some of the, um, uh, the blacking on here where it's corroding. But uh, let me show you right here. This is how you normally get them up like this. After you get some of the fine dirt off of it with a toothbrush, it'll end up looking like, kind of like this. And uh, that's not too attractive. So, this is the next day um, when I cleaned up that slick one that was yesterday. So, last night I went to uh, post a video I noticed that the uh, GoPro didn't uh, do the uh, whole film. So. That was kind of disappointing. <coughs> I haven't looked at the, uh, the nickel cleaning that I did. I'm not sure if it uh, looked at that either. Or I'm not sure if that one um, 
went through either so I'll uh, do my best to uh, get that one looked at and put that in there see it's a little cleaner just rubbing some of the uh, that goo off of it this one here might have been underneath a pine tree or something like that Yeah, it's a little better looking. And it's also got a massive well in it. It's kind of uh, dented. So I'm gonna dry it off. And um, I'm gonna stick it right in the solution, but I'm not gonna drop it. Um, it's important not to let this hit the salt. If this falls in, look, see how clean it's getting? See where my finger is? Or actually where it hasn't hit the solution? Right there. That's how well these, that's how well uh, hydrochloride uh, acid uh, cleans up copper and brass very nicely. But you don't want this to drop into the uh, salt. If it drops in the salt, it's going to pit it. Uh, that's pretty much like where all the energy is right there I've already sampled that with uh, modern day uh, well not modern day but pennies prior of 82 where they were made out of copper I'm gonna give this some brushing you know and I was about to do this second part of the video I was gonna bring my other brush down here and what I did is I was able to, to trim the brushes down to make it a little stiffer get into the grooves a little bit better but it's all right. I, mean, I think you guys get the point. Especially, you see how fast that hydrochloric acid uh, reacts to uh, this. But uh, you can buy smaller uh, jeweler brushes. They have real fine bristles, and it gets right into there. And uh, this being plastic makes it so it doesn't scratch it. Versus using, you know. A, a wire brush even a soft wire brush can do a little bit of harm to the coin so I try to use the plastic and this normally only takes between five to ten minutes once you have everything set up I use I usually uh, like to use steel wool, uh, the SOS pad that was down here. Uh, since it's been a day, it's already starting to uh, rust. Um, but the SOS pad doesn't leave any scratches as long as you use cold water and soap. Good amount of soap, and then you kind of like do like when I, uh, with the brush right here, just go like this in circles. It'll make it nice and shiny and a mirror finish. Now these will tarnish again, you know. Uh, brass tarnishes, copper tarnishes. So if you don't put this in some type of book or behind glass, away from air, they will turn dark again. So if you don't want to sit there and clean your coins every week, put them behind something. To me, I don't really care. I like just to get the, the thick tarnish off. I used to display these coins in books, but then nobody could see them. So then uh, I was like, well, I'll put them in a shadow box with a prong holder. But then I started getting too many coins, so that's out the window. I don't know what I want to do. Now a lot of my coins are just sitting in that jar. I don't even display them because... You get so many of these Indians and wheat pennies and uh, silver coins. So, I don't know what to do with them all. I mean, once you've seen one Mercury, I mean, how many more do you want to see? So maybe I should just put it back in books and put them on a, a shelf somewhere, the, all the different books. I don't know. But definitely the relics I find, I like putting them in a shadow box. I think I could probably make a very large shadow box per year of all the finds I end up getting. Oh 
which would be cool. If you do it for 20 years or so, I could fill up my side of the bedroom with all my my great things. Look at that. Oh, clean it's coming. Now you don't want to keep the acid on there for a long time, just in case there's salt particles uh, floating, because uh, it will pit. This stuff is strong, not strong enough to eat my skin, but it's strong enough to uh, clean up uh, these pennies really, really, really nice. I mean, and I'm not doing any crazy scrubbing. Look, just a toothbrush. Just get in there. If I had the correct toothbrush right now, I could get right into all these like little grooves. Like you see right next to his uh, the, the the feather right there. There's a little piece of dirt. If I had the right brush, I'd get right in there and take that right off. And uh, you know, between using this green scrubby here and then this. Look, there ain't no scrapes. Nothing. It's, it, whatever you see on there is just from the ground. It's a, what year is this thing? A 1903? No, that's 1905. 1905 Indian. Almost looks like it was uncirculated. Now you want to see what it looks like real shined up from a, a Brillo pad? You're like, oh no, don't use the steel wool on her. Oh no, don't do that, don't do that. Let me show you, let me show you. Proof's in a pudding, right? A lot of people think I'm crazy. There are a couple guys on Facebook, they don't know any better how to clean coins. They think you gotta go to a jeweler, have it professionally done, and pay big money. Main thing is cold water, lots of soap, and circles. You don't have to go crazy, I'm not pressing real hard. I'm just going lightly over, just kinda like, smoothing out all the years of of abuse it had in the ground there all the years of the worms kissing this thing and rocks slowly uh, going down the side of it now not all Indians are going to come out beautiful like this um, you know, sometimes when you get an Indian out of the ground they'll be real crusty Look at that. That one scratch on there. Nothing. You don't see no swirly marks. Nothing crazy. Nothing. This is just a nice, beautiful, clean Indian. It's about five to ten minutes worth of work. And there you go. There's a dent up there. It looks like it got whacked. There is a, a little crease where it's bent. But uh, that's an Indian that was in the ground for about a hundred years. And it looks like it's uncirculated. Hydrochloride. Hydrochloride acid. H this stuff here will last you a long time. I recommend not having a steel top though like I have on here. See, this has only been in here about four days. It's starting to rust right here. This hydrochloride acid will eat this top. So, I'm going to be going to uh, Walmart later, looking for another type of container to put this in. Most likely glass, uh, with a glass top twist. Um, I could use plastic too, but I don't know. Plastic gets brittle after a while. Glass can break if you drop it. It's up to you. I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know later. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you like, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.